Welcome to the Paycom Podcast. We are medical management radio for the solo provider and small group physician practice. Paycom is where medicine meets entrepreneurship. Now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Paycom Podcast, medical management radio. Paycom is the professional association of healthcare office management, and I'm your host, Terry Fletcher. Welcome to February. We found out that the groundhog did not see his shadow, so we're hoping for an early spring or hopefully not a super cold winter. Paycom has been, be- has been very busy this year in 2020 already, as we know you have, so we hope that you are looking forward to maybe joining our membership and you'll maybe decide this month. Remember, it's only $19 a month to join at paycom.com. So for today's episode, I would like to introduce my guest, Ms. Suzette Benedict. Suzette has an extensive background in healthcare. She has an MBA in healthcare management from University of Scranton. She's certified in healthcare compliance from George Washington University and holds the certified medical manager credential through Paycom. Suzette is the past president of the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania chapter of Paycom, and currently she is the executive director of the Kidney Care Specialists of Pennsylvania. So we're very happy to have Suzette join us today. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Terry. Thank you for having me. So our topic today has to do with hiring your practice manager for your medical practice. But first, we need to ask the question, what do you want in your practice manager? And Suzette and I had a chance to speak before the episode and just really kind of talk about this topic and kind of field some, um, I guess, some insights on how you would answer that question. And so I'd like to ask Suzette, you know, how, how can you help practices in answering that question, I'd like to pick your brain about that. What should be the what should be the physician's, um, I guess, question or answer to that when they are considering their practice manager position? I would want to look at two things first. I would want to look at the size of your group, and I would like to look at the specialty of the group to decide what's most important for that practice administrator. A smaller group or a specialty that may have more or work inside a hospital or a facility and less work in an office may meet a different type of practice administrator. In either way or either type of practice or size of practice, what's most important is that you get an expert. And that expert will come from someone who has the experience and the education and has been proven to bring a practice along successfully You're also going to want someone that's going to partner with you, that's going to see what your goals are for that practice and what objectives you want. You don't want someone who's working at odds. You want someone who's on the same path and the same thought process as you are. And I love that response. I'm 100% uh, absolutely in agreement with that take. Now, in keeping with that thought, there's a lot of new physicians coming out of school. Um, Some physicians have decided they want to give it a shot at private practice instead of working for a big organization. What advice would you give them on the management of their new practice? Some of them, as you know, have limited financial resources to start. And so where would they go to look for that experienced person and, you know, I guess speak to salary ranges as well? For a new physician starting their own practice or even for a hospital physician that is leaving that hospital system and starting their own practice, I would suggest they first look for someone who's experienced in revenue cycle management. You're going to want someone who has billing and coding experience, someone that can get the money moving for you because it's going to be most important to you to have finances to support that practice that you're working so hard to get off the ground. To look for that person, you can reach out to Paycom. You can advertise with Paycom, um, post on their job board. There's other areas and ways that you can post to look for an individual for this position. But the most important thing, I think, in this aspect would be looking for someone with those skills and that experience to help you move the money. I really like that response because it's interesting in my travels uh, to different practices as a coding and reimbursement consultant, I noticed that uh, in talking to some of the staff members, some of the practice administrators that have been there forever, you know, and they sometimes got their job by default and just moving up through the ranks, you talk to them about coding, billing, and revenue cycle management, and it's a little bit unfortunate about how much they really don't understand it. Um, that you know, I'm not saying, I mean, I guess I'm not saying that I need to be a certified coder, but like you said, it's very helpful if they have insight 
into that job itself and can definitely follow the trail of money and uh, speak to that topic. One of the things that I would suggest is that this individual or even the physician look to see if this individual has any experience as a CMM, as a certified medical manager, one of the nine domains focuses directly on revenue cycle management. And this is one of the areas that is so important to running your practice is to keeping that flow of money going. Now, when you're mentioning the domains, what are the, the nine domains? So there are nine domains of the, of the certified medical management, uh, revenue management, and risk management, both very important. Human resources is also one of the domains, and I think that's one of the areas that some people um, may think they're very skilled at, but could use a little experience and maybe a little guidance, which they can get from the CMM. The next domains we look at are finance and contract management. Finance is important. Again, you need to know where your money is coming from and where your money is going. Those physicians that are starting their new practice, they're out there for two reasons. One, they want to support their patients and they want to provide quality care, but they also need to have a livelihood and they want their new practice to be successful and profitable. We have business management and technology and data management. For those that are not tech savvy, this might be helpful for you. And then the last two are clinical performance reporting and in a time where we're all working in alternate payment methods or we're working where fee-for-service is leaving and we're moving into new types of payment revenue, we need to know how that's going to look. And our clinical reporting is going to support that. If we're not providing that data and providing that information, we're not going to get the money back that we're entitled to. Our physicians and providers did the work. It's our job to make sure that we support that by providing that clinical data. And the last piece is patient clinical education, so very important today, and along with marketing our practice. So they all, these nine domains all tie together. They're virtually the roadmap for all of us to use to run our practice. And these are things that lead up to getting the certified medical manager credential, the, the domains themselves. They're a, a training tool. They are an educational tool and you as an individual or a practice administrator can take a, take one domain at a time and, and get proficient at that domain or become an expert in that domain. Maybe you're really, really good in finance and really good in business management, but you need a little help in revenue cycle management or you need a little help with your human resources side. So those are the domains that you want to focus on, the things that you're not an expert in, and you can go in and, and take those domains individually, get that education, get the book, get the tools and the resources from Paycom to learn about that domain. And once you've, once you've accomplished that, you can move on to the next thing, but that's what's going to make you an expert, one domain at a time. And then once you have those domains accomplished and completed, you can take your certification for that medical manager credential. Oh my God, that sounds good. Now I have a kind of a sensitive kind of topic that kind of leads into what we were talking about. And I want the listeners to kind of, hopefully if you're listening to this, you, you understand where we're going with this. And when I say sensitive, that means politically correct. We know that a lot of single practitioners, um, small group physicians, Either they didn't get this advice that Suzette is, is giving or they are in an already established practice. And a lot of times what we do see is family members that have taken on the role of, of manager or the physician's wife has done that. And sometimes there's now workflow processes and holes in there or slowed reimbursement. And it's not against anybody just because you're a family member. It's just that even being related to the physician or related to the practitioner, you would agree that they still have to be trained, correct? I absolutely agree with that. I, I know practices where there's a family member that's managing that practice and it's very, very successful. And I also know of practices that they struggle a little bit, but I don't think that they have to just throw in the towel or come at odds, you know, and, and get into confrontation with them because trying to figure this out. 
those that are successful is because the practice administrator and the physician are on the same wavelength. They're thinking the same. They have the same goals, the same objectives. They want to see the same successes for that practice. Um, those that maybe have um, a little bit of conflict, maybe because that administrator did just step in to help out for a short period of time, or maybe they really want this position and they really want to be successful. But in those cases, we need to support them. And those physicians need to support their family member. And they can do that by providing the tools and resources. And when I say resources, I'm talking about time and I'm talking about finance because there are expenses in making sure that we do get the education we need and that we can get the tools that we need, such as going out and, and starting to work on these domains. Maybe as that family member, you're really good in business and you're really good in finance, but HR, maybe that challenges you a little. And maybe you don't have as much experience in the revenue cycle management side, but all those pieces are important together. You can't just have three or four pieces. You need the entire package to run that practice. So I would say to these physicians that have hired um, a spouse or a medical manager, don't just assume that they have all the tools and experience that they need. You need to provide them with those tools and resources and support that person so that they're successful and their success will make your business successful. Yes, I would totally agree with that. We actually, um, I was having a conversation with somebody recently about that, actually a very um, large group that had a very big C-suite uh, and over 150 physicians. And one of the conversations was how they put so much uh, budget money into their electronic medical record package and their, you know, the health health information and their um their diagnostics that they have. And I said, well, what is your budget for an example? I said, what is your budget for your uh, central billing office for, let's say, coding education? And they said a thousand dollars. I'm like a month. And they said, no, a year. <laughs> and I was, I was kind of taken back a little bit because there was over 150 <laughs> positions and I was like, wait, what? And that included code books. So in talking <laughs> And just, and I'm, I'm trying not to, to laugh, but you kind of see the ridiculousness of it when you look at the big picture and mm -hmm. what, you know, what staff need to be successful, which then translate into successful practice. And then relating that to um, the management side of things, you know, and like hearing about the domains and, and it does cost money to get somebody educated and understand what the, the job is of a practice administrator. And, you know, can you speak to that a little bit where, you know, where budgets should really be as far as is that part of the business? I think budgets should be part of the practice administrator's package, their benefit package. I think it should be included. Um, a practice administrator needs to stay educated and maybe they're going to get educated in your specialty or maybe they need to be educated in other areas. But we all know that this industry is constantly changing. And we cannot just sit on what we knew from two years ago or five years ago. We constantly need to be educated and we constantly need to be keeping up to date. Otherwise, we lose our value to you as the owner of the practice. We're no longer valuable to you. But if you want us to continue to partner and you want to support us, put that into our benefit package. I would say look at what a conference costs. So what does it cost to send someone to a conference every year? And maybe that's somewhere, you know, between $2,500 or, you know, $3,500 or maybe even more. But look at those costs and budget that every year into your practice administrator's benefit package. Make sure that person understands there's money there for you. We want you to use it. We want to support you. Maybe that money can be used for memberships. That money can be used to go out and earn your CMM. You know, we need to be able to know that the practice and the physician owner is there to support us. And you can do that by putting that money in the budget or in our benefit package. The rest of the budget, we should be looking at our coders. We need to encourage our coders to go to those monthly coding meetings. We need to support them by paying for their um, certification. 
we need to allow them to continue to stay certified. That all comes back to us. That all comes back to us 10 times over. So depending upon how many individuals you have that are certified coders or depending upon the size of your billing team, you should look at probably at least somewhere about $500 a person per year for education just for your billing team. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. I, I need the we need the really the doctors who are, you know, really listening to this and the office managers that are here. We really need your your buy-in on that because as Suzette was talking about, when it comes to being updated and making sure that uh, everyone knows that things change, perfect example. You know, 20 years ago we were sending out paper statements to patients by snail mail. You know, now we, we want to get them out either through an email or through automatic payments. Some still may go out by mail, but just think, you know, sometimes a lot of practices now have a credit card on file. And once the insurance is paid, then the balance is balance billed to the credit card. Or there's now patient portals where patients can pay. And a lot of practices haven't updated. And part of being an office manager and a practice manager is is really having to stay updated with the times and I've noticed that it seems in medicine, we're like the last to get updated. <laughs> it seems like it, it's just a very slow go to, to kind of have some updates there. Just uh, as we're talking about the budgets and just making sure that there is budget money there, not only for, as we were talking about, for the coding department, but also at, in the management department and making sure that every staff member, when they have a role in the the management or the workflows or anything within the the practice, there needs to be budget money to keep them updated, educated, um, even the practice. Right now, we are at such a big deal with paper for, for performance measures. And I had a practice recently, and I think this might speak to one of the domains he's at, that didn't even know what that was. They said, what's, it, what's MIPS mean? And I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, that would that would definitely speak to one of those domains. It would be reviewed in one of the domains of for the certified medical manager. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's it's crazy that just there's still. I mean, I still get asked the question, "How come we can't bill for a consult to Medicare?" And I'm like, "Well, because Medicare eliminated from the fee schedule ten years ago." But yeah. I mean, you know, you try to be like, okay. Okay, you're okay. You're still asking that question, but I mean, we're kind of. I'm being a little bit flip about it, but my point is, is that things change. Technology changes. Everything gets updated. There should not. There should not be a concern about outdated information. That should always be updated. Right. And one of the things that you know, I, I appreciate Suzette, that you talking about is that's what the the domains do. That's what that those tools are for is to really speak to that office manager and to keep her or him and the practice administrator updated uh, so that they can be successful in the practice as well. That's correct. It is, our industry is constantly evolving, and if we're not moving along with it, we're going to lose our place and will not be valuable. So if we want to stay valuable, we need to stay educated, and we can do that with the nine domains. Correct. Now, the last thing I wanted to comment on, and maybe you can speak to this, What's the best way to get the physician buy-in that a certified medical manager is key to their success? I know you brought up a couple of things as far as being updated and, and speaking to you know, finances and, and things like that. But what would be the one key piece to tell a physician this shouldn't really be an option? I would talk about the level of expertise and the person who's the expert that can take over this role for you and do this for you. Physicians need to do what they're trained to do. Physicians are trained to take care of that patient and make those decisions on caring for that patient. And they are good decisions maker, decision makers, and they may be very good business people as well. But their goal was to go into medicine, not to go into business. So we, you as a physician are going to want to find that expert that can take on that role for you, that you can feel comfortable with and you can trust. And that person is going to be somebody who does have the experience and who does have that credential and has shown you that they can do this job by earning that CMM, having that medical manager, manager certification, excuse me, you know, that are going to build the respect and trust and let the physician do their job 
I without agree. worry. Now, yeah. another question. Um, usually there is, and I, again, my background is very heavy coding and billing. And, you know, I do have some practice management, but just in talking and hearing what you're doing and, and being a Paycom member myself and having kind of a, a wealth of information at my fingertips, one thing I, I really haven't looked out and searched out is in different, um, in, in the central billing office, there's always how many staff members should you have per physician? What is the ratio as far as a practice manager? Is, is somebody, is, is the qualified person able to handle, you know, one physician practice also supposed to be able to handle a 20 physician practice? What is your thought on that? I'm going to be honest and tell you that I don't know that there's actual data that tells us what the FTE is per practice administrator. Um, I do know the larger the practice gets, your leadership team will grow. So you can still run that practice. You can run a 50 physician member practice. So long as you have a really good solid leadership team to help you, you would, you would then move up and manage the business side of things. You're going to have an expert running your revenue cycle management who also could be a CMM. You're going to have an expert that's going to help you run human resources as a CMM, and then you're going to take on the things as finance and contract management, but you're going to have a leadership team to help you the bigger your group is, the bigger the practice is, but as a smaller group, one to seven or even one to 10 providers is very manageable for one practice administrator. And depending upon that individual and the type or specialty that you're managing, you could grow that up to maybe even 15. It really depends on how much work flows through the office. Perhaps those physicians and are working more in facilities such as hospitals or other types of facilities and not so much in the office, which frees you up to do work rather than looking at as much patient flow. That's a, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And I like the fact that you said then it kind of moves into more of a team situation that you're now in charge of instead of uh, individual um, staffing, I guess, if the smaller the practice is. So um, it sounds like it, it definitely keeps growing with everything we're doing. And no matter what, certified medical manager, you, you just can't be successful without somebody in that role and uh, that has that uh, that educational background. And we really hope that everyone at least takes a look at Paycom and what it has to offer and reach out to a member, reach out to one of the certified members and, you know, have a conversation with them, uh, just like Suzette or anybody that's on the board. And I'm sure they'd be willing to have that discussion with you. And we really hope if you're a physician listening, that you also consider what that could do for your practice, especially if you feel like you're struggling, or even if you feel like things are status quo, you never know what holes could be there and that what could help you by, by getting a certified um, medical manager. So Suzette, I wanted to thank you for your insight and joining me today on episode five of the Paycom podcast. And uh, we really appreciate having you. Thank you for the invitation. We hope to talk to you again soon. And I wanted to leave the listeners with this in keeping with the Paycom motto of Paycom shares knowledge. You just heard from healthcare industry expert and Paycom a member Suzette Benedict, and we want to remind you that if you are responsible for the management of your practice or you know a physician or practice manager that is, and they want to get as much current industry information and practice management knowledge as they can, this is your podcast. We hope that you will let others know and encourage them to listen in each month. As a reminder, the Paycom podcast broadcasts on the third Wednesday of each month. Also, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Google Podcasts, or whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. So everyone have a great month, and we're thankful for all our listeners, and we uh, hope to see you again in March. So have a great one, everybody. Next time, until next time, thank you for listening to the Paycom podcast, Medical Management Media. Tune in for new shows the third Wednesday of each month. Thank you for joining us. Paycom is the professional association of healthcare office management and home of the nationally accredited certified medical manager. Professional credentials matter. Learn more at paycom.com. That's P-A-H-C-O-M.com.